Hello and welcome to part two of the fuselage construction for the Keelcraft Ladybird. Yesterday I made up one of the sides and I've left them overnight and they've reproduced. Well, actually I've made that this morning. So two sides made and it's time to start thinking about how these are going to be put together. And I've spent a little bit of time yesterday, after, while I was waiting for everything to set, um, trimming up and tidying up these formers, one, two and three. Uh, they needed quite a little bit of fettling to get them right and final cleaning up, but they're done. Plywood's not always the easiest thing to work with, but there you go. So they're done. And there are two more formers to make, F4 and F5, which are actually made out of this one quarter by eight balsa. So I've selected some balsa that I think is suitable, a little bit harder uh, than the other piece that I've got there. I'm going to put a little bit of food wrap down on the board and then we'll make these ready for putting the two sides together. That just stops everything sticking to the board. Let's mark these out and pin them down. So there's one, let's get that cut. And while I'm at the cutting side, I'll mark out the second one. Look here, there we go. Pin these down. When you're using plasterboard as a building board, you occasionally hit a hard part of the board and it, the pins resist it. Don't know, it must obviously be variations in the density of the boarding. But it's a, it's a good surface to build on. So that's the, the longer sides for F4. And then these glue over the top. So let's mark those. You notice that I actually do some of the marking using the blade of the knife rather than doing it by pencil. Just find it easier sometimes. Want them nice and square. I'm going to super glue or CA them on. It's wonderful glue. It has some limitations, but I think it's a great way to build models quickly and accurately because there's no chance of it slipping around or moving. So once this is glued on, that'll be F4 completed. That's F4 done. F5's done slightly differently. Why that might be so, I'm not sure. Instead of gluing on the surface, they're actually butted end to end. Let's mark that. That's the length of that one. Pin that 
bring that down there we go somebody commented when I said the weather was awful so it's time to do some building he said I hope you've got a lot of kits and goodness me he's right once again horrible outside well, what can you do this is this to me is at least 50 percent at least 50 percent of the hobby the building part and i'm glad it is because there would be nothing but frustration if i didn't build and all i did was the flying part of the hobby it's very limiting limiting um and I'm sure that it's even more so in other parts of the world. I've watched YouTubers flying in Alaska and Finland. And sure enough, the weather is extremely grim. I asked a chap who got in touch with us from Finland. I said, how long's the flying season? And he responded 365 days of the year. So, yeah, that's a nice attitude to have, I think. He also boasted about the 24 hours of light in the summer months. So I suppose you can fly any time of the year, any time of the day, rather. See, this one is slightly different. And use a one last part here, and then it actually has a former glued onto the end, which I'll have to find in the box. Roy's father had spent a lot of time very carefully. It was Roy's father who, well, it was Roy who donated this kit from his father's estate. And he had actually done a really nice job of cutting out a lot of the parts, which were simply printed onto balsa sheet. Um, obviously, a kit can be ruined if that's not done properly, but he did a really good job of it. Um, and when this is eventually finished, it will be flown in his honour which I think is only fitting and although Roy doesn't know it I'm going to try and bend his arm to do the maiden as well we'll see <laughs> right well I'll just pause it there while I scrap around in the box to find these formers and then we'll get back to it here we go I found the parts and I'm going to use this central line to line them up because the string allocations are marked on the formers to keep them nice and square. So I'll apply the glue straight on and then hover over the top. Happy with that. That one lines up nicely. And excuse if I get in shot here. Not a pretty sight, I know. There we go. That's that form I done. Okay, so they're now completed. I have all four formers, and because they're nice and square, that gives me a good starting point to actually get a true fuselage without any twists in it. And I'm going to pause here 
well, I get set up for the next stage. So the next stage involves uh, putting the formers, the bulkheads in position. And to do that, I've pinned down uh, one of the sides and I'm going to ensure that each one that's glued in is at right angles to that side. So I've lightly pinned it down. Here we go. I'm going to use a combination of uh, PVA and CA to do this because, as I've said before, I like using CA because it ensures that you've got it right first time without having to mess around with it. So I'm going to put this one in first. No, actually, I'll start from the front. Let's do it properly. So here's, I'm not actually going to put the first one in, F1, because F1, the um, sides need to be pulled in. So I'm only gluing in the, the formers that need to have a flat side. Here's the first one that's going in. Just ensure that it's square. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It's pushed up to where it should be. Zap it in with some CA. Double check that it's square. Yes, I'm happy with that. Now, this next one, I've chamfered an edge onto both of these so that there can be a neat, neat join. And once everything's glued in, I think I'll put some um, white glue down there and I'll actually lightly clamp them if I can adjust it that way. We'll see. This one should slot in nice and neatly. There you go. Check it square. Yeah, let's get some. This has a much bigger surface to glue because it's glued against an upright on the former, on the side rather. Just hold it for a second. Happy with that. Yep. Yeah. I wonder if a clamp would hold that. I'll do that in a moment. Next one is one of the balsa formers. Line it up, get it square. I'm using a small engineer's square there, which fits just fits between the formers. Tacking it to get it in place first, and then I'll run some glue all the way down the other side. There you go. And the last one that I'm, I'll be gluing in it, it, during this stage, F5. Glues along this edge. There it is. I said to somebody, I've got two of everything in the toolbox because I'm always misplacing things. And I said, that's a good idea. I said, well, not really. I should have got three. I'm terrible for putting things down. And misplacing them. Whoops. Pencils are my worst thing. If I'm doing a DIY job for the kids in their homes, they know that they have to have at least half a dozen pencils in the house lying around in various places because I'm bound to put them down and lose them. Just 
Chitlin and a bit of tail to get this race. There you go. Just enough to tack it. And then I can come back in and put the glue in. So there you have it. I'm going to wait until that sea totally goes off. I know it doesn't take long. And then I'll run a bead of PVA down the joints and down this one. And then the next stage will be actually to put it onto a, a fuselage jig, which I'll have to clear the table to do that. So I think a coffee break might be necessary. Bear with me. We'll be back for the next stage. Well, that's well set now. <clears throat> and I've also had second thoughts regarding lifting it from this board to put it on a jig. Why bother when I know that that's actually already square and very rigid. So what I'm going to do instead, I'll place the other side on here, line it up. I think I'll use CA glue for these because they're more flexible. These are very rigid, so I'm going to actually use PVA or white glue for that. And I'll put a weight down and I'll leave it to set in that format. So, let's line it up. As I said, I'm going to put some white glue on this one. On these two, rather. Needs to go along that edge here. Along the edge. And in here. I'll place this in and I'll actually use the C on these two. So let's line it up. I may actually disappear. And put a couple of small clamps on like that. Yeah, I definitely will, I think. I think that would be to my advantage to do that. And these, <coughs> I'll square it up. I need to cut the end because sometimes if you leave this, it clogs up and that's the advantage of these applicators you simply cut the end until you're not happy with what you're left with and then you can put a new one on Move along there and along there and then push it in. Yeah, that's really good. Really good. So Take to leave that now, let it set, and then the next thing, I'll lift it off the board and let you see it, and we'll start pulling it together at the rear, and this is quite a complicated design in this area, so that'll take a little bit of uh, thinking through, very interesting to do. And this bit, I suspect that to get this on, and to get the bearers through and lined up, I may have to notch the inside of these to pull them in we'll see so that's coming along nicely i'm really pleased with that it's got an interesting shape to it pause it there and we'll come back when i lift it from the board this is our time to set now so i can remove these clamps and we can unpin it from the board away 
haven't put many pins in. Let's see if I can get them out easily. That's that one out. Should only be one more. There we go. And a bit of luck. That's just managed to stick itself in a couple of places. And there we go. It's nice and square. I'm pleased with that. We can pull those in at the back. Let's have a look. This gets pulled in like that. And then we can start fleshing this out. I have the engine bearers here. And they can be fed through. I might need to fiddle about with them a little bit. And of course, there's the format to put in the front. And that's definitely going to need to be notched to pull it in and perhaps steamed, which may loosen a couple of the joints. We'll see. But I'm going to call that part of the video done. Part two. And in the next one, which will probably be... Um, in a few days time I'll pull this together and we'll start adding the stringers but there you have it a square fuselage um, hopefully not too heavy it doesn't feel very heavy but of course it's only a small model so thanks for watching stay tuned for part three if you don't mind could you give me a thumbs up it helps spread the word and the algorithm for the youtubers Thank you very much. Have fun. If you're suffering bad weather as I am here, get creative and get some model making done. And I'm sure you'll get more out of the hobby than sitting moping, wondering about when the next flying day is going to come. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.